Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor. I am Sanjay. We are learning Laravel 8 framework tutorial. This is our part number 18. Inside this video, we will see about creating manual validators using validator facade. And also guys, if you are looking up the blog articles of KKPHP4, CodeIgniter4, MySQL, Node.js, WordPress, then you must visit this blogging website. If I back to browser, so here we have the blogging website and inside this we have several categories with interesting blog articles. We have like CodeIgniter4, WordPress, KakePHP4, MySQL, Node.js and Laravel 8. If I scroll down, here we have the recently posted blog articles. And one more thing, inside this blogging community we have a newly added section that is create an article. This is a section for guest post publication. If you are interested to post your article with online web tutor, simply you need to click on create an article, publish your author details, as well as pass your blog post details. After passing author details and blog details, just you need to submit this post means guest post to admin approval. Once, once admin will approve, then it automatically get published over this online web tutor blogging website. What is the value of this post? This post will give you a 100% do follow backlinks. This is your blog, so just copy means you need to publish your article with online web tutor. Back to the topic. So inside this video, simply we are going to create our manual validators. In the last two videos, we had seen using validate method as well as request class method. By the help of those two approach, we have simply validated our a simple form. So if I back to editor, this is our form, what we have created so far. So inside this form, we have a name field, email field and mobile field, which have the name attributes as name email and mobile. Apart from this form we have to handle all about the errors so we have used if directive where we have used or errors that is a global variable it is checking that if we have any error then simply we are iterating over all the errors by using for each directive. To print any specific error also we have used the error directive and here we need to pass our name attribute. So this is all about the form. So after filling all the values, we need to submit to the server. So let's pass an URL. If I back to web.php, this is add a student which is going to call a student controller. Here it is and inside this student controller, we need to go inside add a student method. So here inside this add a student method, we are calling myform.blade.php. So this is the form. So if I back to browser, go here and let's type in called add-student. This is the form. Now here we need to provide some validations. In the last two videos we had seen but this time we are going to approach with creating manual validators. Back to editor and here we have the form and inside this form right now we have no action URL. Back to web.php, here we have a post request type that is pointing towards submit hyphen data which is calling a submit data method of student controller and if we go student controller here we have the method so what I will do simply copy this route and go here and passing here inside this action attribute. Save all these changes if I go here, reload this page, enter name if I inspect that, go here inside this console and here inside this action attribute we are getting submit hyphen data. So simply when we pass no data, when we pass any data, so it will call this submit data route and it calls submit data method of this student controller. Now if I back to this method to actually write our piece of code for the validation, so this time 
we are going to use validator facade. So here let's request we need to create an instance of that. So here it's dollar req let's say request instance of this request class. So first of all before use of validator validator actually facade we need to import that first. So here let's say use validator and when I type in as we can see we are getting validator it is automatically filtering out. So pressing enter so here we have eliminate support facades and this is validator. So if we need to create our manual validators, first of all we need to import that class, save this change, go inside this submit data method and inside this what I will do let's say simply validate equals to next we have called validator and inside this validator we have a make method. Inside this, the IntelliSense says that first we need to pass the data, second we need to pass the rules and third we need to pass the messages. So let's pass one by one. So inside this first, we need to pass data. So we will get by using this request instance, by using this all method. In the second, we need to pass our rules. So make an array and let's say that we are getting our name attribute. Here we will get our email and we will get our mobile. So first of all for this name let's say the name field should be required. Also the email field should be required and finally the mobile field also should be required. If we want to put some minimum and maximum length validation to this name field also we can achieve that. So let's say pipe symbol here we need to type minimum equal to 4 it means the name value should have the minimum characters equals to 4 also if you want to pass something like max so here we need to pass 20 it means the name value should have the maximum characters equals to 20 if we go inside this mobile also we can put about the characters or let's say digits validation for this mobile if we go here writing a pipe symbol and let's say digits between we need 9 to 11 it means the minimum digits of mobile values should have equals to 9 characters and the maximum equal to 11 characters also in case of email field if we want to put something like the email should be unique throughout the database so simply we need to type called unique and after that we need to pass the table name so let's say we have the table name something tbl underscore users so what this rule do this rule checks that the email already exists or not inside this table because it is going to maintain the uniqueness of email address. So here are the few rules actually we had written. So get rid of that because we are not writing right now all about the model based concept. So after taking all the form inputs, writing our form validation rules, next we need to check that if our form data satisfies all these form validation rules what we have provided so validate this is an instance of this validator facade so validate we have a fails method it means if suppose we have submitted our form without any data so it is not going to validate this form because the required attribute is also there so it will go inside this if block so after getting that first of all we need to return to the same web page like my form with all validation input errors. So return let's redirect we need to go inside add student route. So redirect to add student route and this is the route actually what we have for this form add student. Next we need to go with the validation errors so with validation or simply let's say with errors and inside this we need to pass validate which is going to contain all the validation error messages validate next we need to write let's say 
with input. So save all these changes. Otherwise, if our form data successfully actually validate all these rules means it all the means filled values have their value they satisfy also all about the minimum and the maximum characters so after that it will go here so simply let's say print a here we to use request instance and simply I am printing all the data what we are getting from the form so save all these changes go here reload this page and let's say that for the first time we are not passing any data here click on submit and as we can see that the name field is required the email field is required and the mobile field is required and here it's we have a specific error so this is because after validating this form we have returned to this add a student route with errors and all the errors contained inside this validate instance now if we pass the data inside this form let's pass any data click on submit we need to provide a valid email address click on submit now as we can see that we have a value set this is all about using request all method so this is all about for validating a form now in case if we want our custom error messages so in the last two videos also we had seen that how can we make our custom error messages so in the same pattern this is the area of form validation rules in the second array and here inside this array simply let's say that for this required field like name dot required name this is field name next we need to provide our form validation rule name and simply let's say name is needed now if we save we only provided our custom error message for this required rule now if we save back to browser reload this page click on submit now we have name is needed this is our custom error message and here we have so successfully guys by the help of last two videos and the current video we have actually covered all the things in validation by using our validate method by using our request class as well as validator facade and one more thing before closing this video that by while using this validator facade here is the approach what we had done and simply we had used a fails method if suppose we are not interested to write this piece of code so make comment of this line so how can we validate this form so simply we have the alternative option to use validate method so simply we need to use validate method here so after getting any errors it automatically redirects to this my form because this is the request means inside this we are coming from this my form so automatically get back via our back route so if we save let's see in action back to browser reload this page click on submit now as we can see that the same things happen so this is all about the errors in the next video we will some we will see some more different more different concepts so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day